I'm sure many kids, I'm sure everybody in this room has had that dream where you're floating and it's a magical feeling. But I can tell you, when you put the whole human body in weightlessness, there's not a whole lot magical about it initially. There's a whole lot that doesn't feel right. So you can see me come through, I'm timid. Here, uh, uh, Swanee, my commander's just gonna grab me and kind of drag me through the space station to get me where I need to go. I had trained essentially for five years for this mission. And so I knew the space station inside and out. But what I didn't know was the space station inside and out when you have no gravity. And so you take gravity away and now my environment was unbelievably confusing for the first two or three days. I would get lost, there's no up or down, there's no walls, there's just stuff everywhere. And it's an operational laboratory. I mean, it's a mess in there of wires and experiments and it was, it was crazy. And uh, my stomach felt full all the time. So imagine you turn off gravity and now everything you ate for breakfast, that blueberry muffin, that cup of coffee, maybe you had a nice big glass of milk. Well, now that's got nowhere really to sit. And so it's like up to there, Ugh, like way up to there. And so you know you need to eat, but you don't want to eat. You know you need to drink, but you don't want to drink. It's just like, oh, this is, this is not good. Uh, around day three, we were getting better at floating. It's real funny, Alex and I were both rookies and we would just knock stuff off the walls like crazy. You'd go floating into the US lab and you would just plow stuff right off the walls. And uh, so Swanee would come behind us. He had been up there for three, three months already and he would just gently be putting all the stuff back that we had knocked off. He wasn't yelling at us, he just knew it would get better over time. Um, and then the interesting thing for, uh, for me was how much the tops of my feet hurt. When we get into space, the first thing your mind wants to do really is get you oriented like this. And so we have handrails everywhere and you'll lock your feet under them and then you pull up with your toes to stabilize yourself and then the tops of your feet end up getting blisters and, uh, and uh, take callus, calluses on the tops of your feet. Uh, my first run on the treadmill, uh, this was something that I had tweeted, that my heels were tingling, felt weird, and the food bouncing in your stomach. So not only do you feel full, but now you have to feel what it feels like that food bouncing off the top of your stomach and then back down. And it's a really weird kind of, it almost felt like I had eaten a bunch of golf balls and they were just kind of hurling themselves around in there. So I don't know, I, I can't do cartwheels. Maybe it's the same sensation, but I don't think so. It was weird, but it got better. And then I woke up on day four and it was like magic. Like a fairy had visited me in space and just said, everything will be good from here on out. And I woke up, I felt great. And then I started to realize that space is like every lazy man's dream. You can just float from one side to the other while I walk and you can lift up this whole stage and just push it across the space station to your buddy over on the other side. And everything started to get really easy. And my mind loved it, my body loved it. And you could tell that the human body is an amazing adaptive machine. And it just took this new, uh, this kind of new challenge, just swallowed it up and said, all right, it took me four days and then I felt great. So when we do space tourism here in the future, Make sure your mission is at least five days. I guess that's the takeaway from that one. Because the first four are not going to be super.